when I was in my 20s and was looking for myself in New York. I was simply trying to find who I was and one day I bumped into two filmmakers. One that practically shocked me in the, in the way that he composed his images and that was Brisson. And the other was a Japanese filmmaker, Ozu. And it was then that I started to have my faith grow into the possibility that I can make films. And I think Bresson opened that path for me of how to precise an image. So it was really about the frame. I was looking at this film called Pickpocket and not knowing who Bresson is, just the fact that I was watching this choreography of images and the way he constructed almost like an orchestra. There's so much lucidity in the editing and in the narrative structure in this film. The images keep skating, they keep dancing, you know, their way on, even if the story itself is ultimately you know, heading for a tragic end. In a way, Bresson uh, still lives in me quite a bit. And, and I still watch his films as if it was the first time I'm watching his films. There's, there's always... And you know, people might not find this in his films, but I find quite a bit of humor. In, in the way he constructs his, his, his images. I mean, there's, there's always that kind of utterly over subtle uh, humor that he infuses in his films. Where are you? Monte. Yes, I would say uh, he definitely inspired me to make films. Look, if, if, I, if I go now, dig into my films about, you know, I'm sure to find shots that I unconsciously kind of were inspired by. So I don't want to say cut and paste, imitate it, because that would, you know, belittle my position in cinema. But I would say when I watch a film by Wesson, it's always because it's nourishing. L'Ensole de Lac, for example, I still have to watch again and again and again and there's also a, a bit of a souvenir, a personal souvenir for, in that film because the producer that put me on the scene of the filmmaking world, his name is Amber Balzon, and he produced my second feature film. And I remember that when I was making Divine Intervention, we would go to dinner and then we would go to, the, to this little island in Paris where Brisson lived and he would tell me stories about Brisson because he was not only his assistant but he acted one of the main roles in Danse de Delac. Oui, oui, allez vite. So there's also this interconnection of personal st stories that also kept on happening after, you know, the first encounter with Brisson. There is an air, an air of melancholy that appeared so much in the eyes of his non-actors. See, the thing about, about Brisson and the way he composed every single move in his film is what fascinated me, because everything is so calculated and every step, you know, was thought of a million times and, and it, I mean he's if I inherited anything and probably not fully uh, but it's this precision that really was so beautifully composed I I think that the fact that he always you know brought in the tragic 
element of the human existence and the cruelty of the world that I think definitely synchronized with my uh, way of looking at the world. The problem with the way we view cinema is that we're always looking for the new output. I'm always hoping that revisiting classics would maybe, you know, reduce from the polluted images that we watch today. If the world of the film was really trying to comprehend and, and look at Bresson's film critically, I would say there would be a questioning of of our moral values and our ethical positions. Thank you.